Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... thousand dollars for one of our couples, and if any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him a hundred dollars. The word tonight is, uh, room. Well, Groucho, we have, uh, Susan Miller and Bill Pearson waiting to talk to you. So, folks, you grin, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word, and you each win an extra hundred dollars. And you win an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Susan Miller and Bill Pearson, huh? Susan, uh, you're taller than he is, so I'll start with you. Let's find out your story. Are you married? Yes. Well, that's the end of the story. <laughs> now, what else is cooking? Would you describe your husband? Just a few well-chosen insults will oh, do. Oh, he's a nice guy, and I like him. You like him? Yeah. Oh, well, I detect a, a slight uh, Scottish burr there. Are you from Scotland? Yes, I am. How did you meet your bonny laddie? Oh, we went on a picnic one Sunday, and at night he took me to the show. Took you to what show? The movie show. Aye. But he was a typical Scotsman. He didn't believe in wasting time, did he? Eh? No. How old are you, Susie? Twenty-four. Twenty-four? Well, you're, well, you're a fine-looking fine lassie, Susie. Thank you. And in this case, I hope lassie never goes home, huh? <laughs> now, you're uh, Bill Pearson. Huh? Isn't this pretty late for a little boy like you to be up? Uh... <laughs> how, how old are you, laddie? Uh, Thirty-five. Thirty-five, just as I thought. You ought to be in bed. <laughs> <laughs> how big are you? Uh, five foot two, 106 pounds. 106? I had more than you for breakfast this morning. <laughs> but, of course, if I don't watch myself pretty close, why, I'll bounce up to around, oh, 114, 16. Why do you have to watch your weight? Well, I'm a jockey, and... Uh, oh, jockey, yeah, well, you're oh, lucky. Sure. You just have to watch your diet. A lot of people who bet on you aren't eating at all. <laughs> you're so right. <laughs> you're so right. You know, I know who you were, Billy. Uh, you're a very famous jockey. I didn't recognize when, when you came in, but I've, I've certainly heard of you. Well, I'm not much of a racetrack fan, but where are you from, Billy? Little Rock? No, uh, Chicago, Illinois, but I've been living out here. Oh, Chicago player. <laughs> but Somebody I'm... out there from New Zealand. Yeah, you're so right. You're from Chicago? Yeah, well, I've been out here most all my life, uh -huh. Southern California. You prefer uh, Chicago? No, 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 I don't prefer it. I prefer Southern California. Did you go to high school in L.A.? Well, not exactly high school. I, uh, I got kicked out in the seventh grade. I didn't quite get up. Uh -huh. You got kicked out of uh, school? Yeah. Why did they throw you out? Was it... I was smoking some Q-babs in the classroom and the whole, I don't know, the... the... Wait a minute, you said room. <laughs> you said room, and uh, Broken Dora uh, gives you $50, and your partner here $50. Huh? Say, this money looks like money I seen when I was... No, this isn't real money. You see, we're not allowed to photograph real money. <laughs> Oh. But after the show, we will replace that with a bona fide uh, $50 bill. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you always this skeptical about everything? No, but I was a little surprised you got John L. Lewis's picture on there. <laughs> John L. Lewis's picture on there because you were so small, I thought you was a minor. <laughs> now, what did you do when you were bounced out of school? Well, then I uh, went out for amateur uh, boxing and... Uh, you were a boxer? You mean a dog? No. <laughs> I had a very promising uh, career. I, Is that so? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I remember you in the ring. I was there the night you fought Primo Canera. <laughs> <laughs> How did you make out in the ring? Oh, great, great. I, I was one of the few fighters that uh, ever quit uh, with a perfect record. Oh, I never wonderful. win one. <laughs> but I only had
had three, you understand. Well, Billy, I must say you're an inspiration to the youth of America. <laughs> well, apparently you're in the right business now. A good jockey must make around ten or twelve thousand a year. Oh no, no, they not make... that much. Oh, a hot walker makes ten or twelve thousand. A what? A guy that cools horses out. He makes that much. Oh. A good jock makes oh between fifty and a hundred thousand. Is that so? Well, when my daughter goes to school tomorrow. I'm going to hand her a cigar and tell her to get herself thrown out. <laughs> now, how do you get along with the other jockeys, Bill? Is there much rivalry between you? Well, semi-rivalry. In the jocks room, of course, uh, they got guards all over the joint so that you can't belt somebody with a boot jack. But other than that, you know, we're pretty friendly. Although I got a good proposition going tonight. Uh, Eddie Arcaro and Willie Shoemaker, they think that I got to pull up with zero on this program and uh, on account of the brain business, you know, and so... You mean they think you're a jerk? <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in the quiz business, you know, but I got them clipped for 50 clams already, so we're all right. <laughs> but Billy, but Billy, I must point out something to you. This didn't require any intellectual effort. This was sheer luck, this thing. Uh, I, listen, the way I've been going at the Flamingo in Las Vegas, I need anything. This is the greatest thing I've ever But the, the deal is that with our Carol and them guys... Are you a sucker enough to go up against that Las Vegas thing? I'm here through courtesy of the Chamber of Commerce of Las Vegas. My body is owned by that power. <laughs> Well, if your body is, on, is owned by them, they haven't got much, I must say. <laughs> well, tell, what is this bet that you have with Shoemaker and Akaro? Well, like I say, they thought I was going to pull up with zero, so they bet me that uh, all the money that I would, or we would blow on the program, why, I got to double it. You know, if I blow a hundred, then I got to give them two apiece. Mm -hmm. And but suppose, all... suppose you win. Suppose you give then the I, right answer. Then, then they're going to pay me. Double? Let's see, double. Everything is double, so already we got... No, this, this has nothing to do with that. <laughs> Just forget about this. No, this it's money I luck, said huh? I was going to come home with. I, it don't... Oh, it doesn't make any difference whether you used your brains oh, or not. Oh, no, no, because... Uh, <laughs> after Las Vegas, well, I Well, I haven't seen your name in the papers recently, Bill. Have you been in jail? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Uh, I just got uh, back a week ago from a trip around the world... Uh, where I've been riding in Siam and Greece. And I rode in Paris, Longchamp, saint Cloud, Maison Lafitte. That's French talk, yes. you know. <laughs> and, uh... What does that mean, Maison Lafitte, you know? Something's on your feet, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the name of a... I think it means it, it's something on your Maison, huh? <laughs> That's right. We're a couple of real linguists, aren't we, huh? But the, uh... Travel certainly broadens one, doesn't it? <laughs> what do you do for relaxation, Billy? Do you uh, bet on the dog races? No, no. Uh, I collect primitive art. Uh, I really? have uh, African or Northwest Coast or pre-Columbian figures. Why? How big is your collection? Do you have a large collection? Well, it's uh, oh, I guess one of the one of the best private collections. How United did you happen States. to uh, stumble on this as a hobby? Well, I was riding for a guy in Paris. One day he said to me, if you win this race, why, uh, I'll give you a, a painting, a, a Renoir. Well, that's kind of fancy, you know, and I didn't exactly know what he meant, so I said, no, I'll take the cash. <laughs> you realize you were very foolish. I found that out later, you oh, see. Then that's when I decided to take it up. You know, you got to find oh, out this, them guys' names. This is sort of surprising. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think Renoir was? A Hungarian restaurant? <laughs> well, you're a cute couple, and I'd like to talk to you some more, but the uh, time has come to play... Uh, you bet your life and win some money. You both understand the game? Yeah. Now, you selected explorers and adventurers. Now, what do you want to start with? Well, a uh, hundred dollars. All right. All right. You, don't take, you don't take the 50 back, though, do you? <laughs> no, and we also don't take your check if you lose it. 
All right, what was the name of the American Army officer and explorer who mapped the Oregon Trail and crossed the Rocky Mountains to California? He was known as the Pathfinder. This is a hundred dollar question. Wilburn Clark? <laughs> no, and it wasn't Clark or McCullough. <laughs> It was John C. Fremont. So now you owe Shoemaker and this, who this other fella, huh? Our Carol. I you, just blew 200. You just blew $200. But you still have 50 well, in now, this game we're playing here. This is, uh, okay. <laughs> there are no answers on this sheet over no. here. <laughs> what are you going to go for? Uh, 90. 90. Uh, what was the name of the Spanish, what was the name of the Spanish conqueror of Peru? Oh, uh, Pizarro. That's right. You don't have to go any further. Pizarro. Now, wait a minute, wait um, just a moment. How did you happen to know that? Pizarro, well, I collect the uh, Inca things. Well, that's, that's very good. You see, you see, now you, you have achieved something by collecting these uh, odd uh, exhibits. Ninety dollars, but... Yeah, you now have 140. <laughs> All right. Go, what are you going to go for? Eighty. Eighty? Eighty, yeah. We'll Eighty? Go. What was the name of the Norwegian explorer who was the first to reach the South Pole in 1911? Um, the Norwegian, okay. Oh, no, not Swenson. Uh, the guy that uh, Oh, Toledo, I know that. My wife will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it's Raoul uh, Roel Amundsen. That I'd have never got. No. You see, you didn't collect those Norwegian exhibits, huh? <laughs> now, it's your last chance to beat the other couple. You have $70 now, Bill. What do you want to go for? Hours. How much have I lost, though, on the other proposition? <laughs> I don't know how the paramutual is going to work out on this. Uh... My guess is you'll be a shoemaker by tomorrow morning. <laughs> Seventy dollars? Yeah. What was the name of the navigator who, in the Golden Hind, was the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe? Couldn't have been Magellan. Oh, um, uh, Drake. Uh, uh, Drake, Drake, yeah, don't Drake, go any Drake, further. Drake. <laughs> $140. That'll keep him out of Vegas for 10 years. Uh, Groucho, we have a housewife uh, waiting to talk to you. She's Mrs. Uh, Rosalind Gelfgren, and her partner is a very special guest. A man known to millions as the conductor of the Court of Human Relations, Mr. John J. Anthony. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common way, something you find around the house. John, your name is a household word, and it's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Groucho, and certainly your name is a household word, too. That may be true, but what the word is, we can't mention here. <laughs> You, you know you've given thousands of people advice on marriage, but I want to know something, uh, John. Are, are you married? Oh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. 25 years, the same woman. Is that so? Well, you don't look that old. Huh? No, but I am. Well, congratulations. Anybody who's been married 25 years is well qualified to warn others about marriage. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, while we're on the subject, why do people get married? Is it love, companionship, or the joint income tax? <laughs> well, uh, Or is it a combination of all three? Uh, most people get married because they actually think they're in love. Uh, some of them get married for security, others want companionship. And believe it or not, a great many people get married simply because it's a thing to do. You didn't mention the income tax at all, huh? Uh, you don't think that's a contributing factor? No, not these days. There's nothing left anyway, no matter how you pay it. <laughs> that's a very sound observation. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh... <laughs> Who are you again, uh, Rosalind uh, Gelf Gelfgren? Gelfgren, huh? That's a very uh, unusual name. Uh, what kind of a name is that, Rosalind? It's a Swedish name. Are you a Svenska? No, I only by marriage. My oh. husband is. Your husband is. Well, let's talk about your marriage, Ros. You you're married now. Uh, why well, did you marry your husband? Well, I married him because I loved him and because we both like to read and we both like herring and we're both Democrats. <laughs> Thank you.
You know, you can like herring and not be a Democrat. Republicans don't like herring. You were both Democrats, huh? Too bad he wasn't a Republican. Then after you were married, you could have had a third party. <laughs> now, how is the marriage waking out, Roz? Well, uh, we've been married five years now. So far, so good. You haven't slugged each other yet? No, not yeah. yet. Are you happy? Uh, quite. Mm. Quite. Well, that's a guarded statement, huh? <laughs> well, how do you know you're happy? You haven't checked with Mr. Anthony, have you? Well, I'll check with him then. Am I happy, Mr. Anthony? <laughs> Mr. Anthony, here we have the case of Mr. and Mrs. Gelfriend. Oh, huh? no, no, no names, please. Uh, <laughs> now, why should they have gotten married just because they were both Democrats? Well, as long as he was in love with her husband, she could have married him, even if he was a Republican. I doubt that. <laughs> Anthony, do you seriously recommend intermarriage between Democrats and Republicans? Well, there is an obstacle to be overcome there. It'll never work, John. <laughs> like asking a bird and a worm to eat out of the same dish. <laughs> Sooner or later, there's just one of them left. The Democrats. That's right. <laughs> what sort of work do your, does your husband do? Uh, he's in the Merchant Marine. You mean he goes to sea? Yes, he goes to sea about seven months out of the year. Well, that's the best explanation of married happiness. I <laughs> you know. Now, Mr. Anthony, what is your opinion? Is this a good arrangement for a man and a wife to be separated seven months of the year? Frankly, I don't think so. Uh... I beg to differ with you. I think it's an excellent arrangement. <laughs> John, what's the basic cause of marriage crack-ups? Uh, too many meatloaves? No, <laughs> incompatibility. Incompatibility? Actually, actually, that's so. Well, that's true. A couple I know broke up just last week for that very reason. They certainly were incompatible. He had no income and she wasn't patable. <laughs> I can remember that one. Yes. All right, now let's play you bet your wife. Uh, play you bet your life. <laughs> you selected movie quiz. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $140, and the secret word is room. It's a movie quiz. What do you want to start with? 10, 20, all the way to 100. Let's live dangerously, 100. Yeah, all right with me. All right, what was the picture starting, starring Montgomery Clift and Elizabeth Taylor that told the story of an ambitious young man who kills his former sweetheart in order to marry a wealthy girl? A place in the... Oh. That's, that's all, all right. right. But all right. Uh, from now on, you discuss it before you answer. Place in the sun is right. Uh, anyway, with $200. Uh, talk to him, George. Well, you have $200 at this point. <laughs> Say something else to him. Uh, what kind of a question would you like next? We 90. Have... No. 90. 90. Live dangerously. All right. What was the picture about Welsh coal miners made in 1941 that starred Walter Pigeon, Maureen O'Hara, and Green Donald Crisp? Valley? How green is my valley? How green is Rudy Valley? That's right. <laughs> You now have $290. How green is my alley? Now what are you going to go for? Maybe all right with you? The hey. limit? It's oh. the limit, that's all. Well, how do you know so much? We're working our way to... I watch the show every week. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not going to hurt you in the, uh, in the rest the of this quiz. The only Canadian my husband understands. Well, that's because he's at sea seven months a year. Oh, no, he, he has a television on the ship and he watches you faithfully. Oh, really? All the ships at sea? No, just you. Oh, I see. <laughs> when is he sailing again? I wish I knew. <laughs> All right, for $80 in 1944, Tallulah Bankhead, William Bendix, and Walter Slezak appeared in a dramatic picture about a disaster Lifeboat? at sea. Tell me the name of it. Lifeboat? That's right. Lifeboat is right. You now have $370. And it's your last chance to beat the other couples. I presume you're going for $70. That's, That's right. Enough. Judy Holliday played a dumb blonde who was tutored by a young writer in an effort to acquire polish. What was the name of this today? picture? Now, wait a minute. A young writer who was tutored by a polish. Born yesterday, wasn't yes, it? Yes, that's right. Born yesterday? Absolutely correct. Uh -huh. And you wind up with $440. Nice meeting you, Mr. Anthony. Well, Roger, we don't have time for the usual three couples tonight. Uh, so that means that uh, Mr. Anthony and Mrs. Gelfrin with $440, in just one minute, will get the chance at the $1,000 question. 
Um, however, before we go into that, uh, the jockey, uh, Billy Pearson, uh, has a plan that he'd like to talk to you about. You remember that uh, during the quiz, he had side bets with two other jockeys. Every time he uh, missed a question, he had to pay them whatever he lost. Well, he has an idea of a way to, uh, so we say, get well. Well, come on in, Billy, and let's have this plan. Uh, Bill, well, it's uh, not really a plan. It's a swindle, but I got to get even. I'm $340 stuck, you understand, on my other thing. Maybe you'll have a winning horse tomorrow. Well, yeah, but this is more sure, you see. So I figure if, if I could go just on the $1,000 question. You mean you want, uh, you want us to give you a chance at the yeah, big at question? The but if you, if you, uh, you know, if I get it, you see, yeah. you don't have to give me the no. G. But then you'll get, got... a, you'll get $1,000 yeah, from that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about me? What do I get out of this? If it's an easy question. <laughs> if it's an easy question. <laughs> Now remember, the other couple, the winning couple, still get the real chance at the money. Oh, but this, sure, sure. this is just for you to pauperize these two jockeys sitting in that jack room, is that what you call it? No, the jocks room. Jocks room. Yeah. Yeah. You've taken the other people out, though, all right. They can't hear no, this. They can't hear this. So okay. that... All right. Now, in the British Empire Games, held in August of 1954, two men ran the mile in under four minutes. One of them was Roger Bannister of England. For $1,000, what was the other one? He officially holds the world's record for the mile. Give him a chance to think. Give him a chance to think. It's a Czechoslovakian, I'm sure. Uh, it's not uh, Kopec. Kopec. No, you've had a chance, and my advice to you is to raise a thousand dollars someplace. <laughs> the man's name is John Landy of Australia. And I wouldn't go back to Santa Anita at all if I were you. <laughs> I would go right back to Vegas. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. We gave you a chance, huh? Yeah. Now, here's John J. Anthony and his partner, Mrs. Gelfrin. They've been off stage. And they couldn't hear Billy Pearson's answer to the $1,000 question. So now they get a chance at it. Would you come on in, folks, please? Come right out. Here. Thank you. There it is. In the British Empire Games, held in August of 54, two men ran the mile in under four minutes. One of them was Roger Bannister of England. For $1,000, who was the other one? He officially holds the world's record for the mile. Who is this man? Talk it over. Wait till the music stops. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Uh, Landy, I... John Landy, that's absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> you win a thousand dollars, and, uh... How much in the quiz, George? Well, they went all the way, four hundred and forty dollars well, in the quiz. Well, that's fourteen. Now, what are you going to do with all that money, Mr. Anthony? Well, tax day is coming along soon. We were talking about oh. that. This isn't going to hurt, you know. No. Well, it'll uh, it'll help the tax department, though, won't it? Yeah, well, and what are you going to do with yours? Spend it. Spend it. <laughs> that's right. You know, you're fooling around with the revenue department. And I'll see you in Alcatraz. Good night, and. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by your DeSoto Plymouth Theater. And don't forget to listen to You Bet Your Life every Wednesday night on radio.